Yes, of course I am working on a Saturday here at the 47th annual UCLA State of the Art Urology course in the beautiful Ritz-Carlton in Marina del Rey. I am excited to talk about something that I discussed prior several months ago and there's an update to what is going on and I'm going to talk about Pylarify and Beth Lakey is one of the smartest people in Pilarify when it comes to this technology. Pilarify is high flu low last at. It's a flucyclovine 18 PET CT imaging for prostate cancer. And I'm holding in my hand the latest NCCN guidelines when it comes to prostate cancer detection. And I want to kind of ask you what's been new. I know we spoke in in mid-November last year and something has changed. Absolutely and thank you for the time again Dr. Lin to speak with you and your audience. So um, our product Polarify is an F18 PSMA PET imaging agent and the generic name is Piflufolistat um, but you may hear it colloquially known as PYL and a lot of the research information will be under DCF PYL. So since we last spoke there has been an update to the NCCN guidelines specific on on the principles of imaging for prostate cancer and we're very excited that these guidelines are in place because they give a really good clinical indication as to where the imaging agent should be applied in the clinical management of your prostate cancer patients. Initially it was for possible recurrence and exactly. detection of recurrent disease, but what is new? So we have two indications for Polarify. So as you mentioned before, the most common understanding is the utilization in a recurrent setting with an elevated PSA after some sort of definitive therapy. But there's an additional indication, and this was reflected in our clinical trial known as the Osprey study, so bird imagery. But in that study, we looked at it in a um, pre- initial definitive therapy setting. So these were candidates who we knew had prostate cancer, they had metastases, and we were looking at PSMA to determine the best course of definitive therapy. So this was in high risk NCCN guideline patients. And we have very good results and it ended up as an indication on our product. So it's no longer just for recurrence. So for someone with de- newly diagnosed aggressive prostate cancer, you want to find out if there's metastasis, this will be a, a good study for that. Exactly. So if you know if your patient is a candidate for initial definitive therapy based upon the risk stratification, then PSMA PET may be a great imaging agent for that. So no longer do you need to to get your MRI, CT, uh, or bone scan. You can just get one of these and then be done with it. And and you said it great. Um, The principles of imaging actually do a comparison to previous PET imaging agents, such as C11 choline or the previously known Oxymen as fluciclovine PET. And the guidelines actually show that there is increased sensitivity and specificity with the PSMA imaging agent and so the need for a negative conventional imaging is not considered necessary for a PSMA scan and additionally it is also effective at lower levels of PSA as you may recall flucyclovine has a threshold of two nanograms rise before it's applicable with ours it does not have that limitation and so we see nice specificity and sensitivity even at PSA level lower than two. Yeah, that's what's been pretty impressive when I'm looking at the materials here, that is the it's the sensitivity and specificity of Polarify. Uh, and just to just to kind of go over principle, principles of imaging, what Beth is talking about is specifically coming from the NCCN guidelines, principles of imaging, and I'm going to read verbatim that the panel does not feel that conventional imaging is necessary, is a necessary prerequisite to PSMA PET and that PSMA PET slash CT or PSMA PET slash MRI can serve as an equally effective if not more effective frontline imaging tool for these patients. So there you go. 
Yes, and we really appreciate that they were so timely with the guidelines. As you know, our product was just approved last year, so these timelines are nicely updated. The Society of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging has also developed guidelines that are analogous to the National Comprehensive Cancer Network. In addition, the American Urology Association has also confirmed the NCCN guidelines. So it's an exciting era for PSMA PET, and we really hope that it gets to the patients that need it. The most. Very exciting when it comes to therano. Uh, that well, this is this will be diagnostics yes. for now. But we are looking forward to a future of a theranostic approach, which means we would be able to use the same target for imaging as we would for therapy. So if you can see it, you can treat it, or as what we like to say, Atlantheus, you find it, you fight it, and you follow it. Love it, just love it, love it. Now. This is all great, but what is the current availability of Pilarify? So we have um, our pharmacy manufacturing facilities all over the United States. Currently, we have more than 80% coverage, so we're very happy with the logistical possibilities that F-18 provides. And what I mean by that is F-18 is the type of radionuclide that can be delivered to your institution. Um, so the product comes to your patient, and specifically in Arizona, we have had some of the most most robust coverage in the entire United States. So you have some very sophisticated pharmacy manufacturing facilities who've been providing doses since the summer. That is wonderful to hear. Now, just because it's available doesn't mean that it's currently covered by insurance. That is As correct. we all know, it's legal and financial. That's what hinders progress and hinders delivery of these novel agents to our patients. How is that coming along? That's actually going very well. As you said, we have a lag time between the FDA approval of a product and the opportunity to speak to private insurance coverage as well as CMS to make sure that they understand that the new product exists and the proper indications. So we're very excited to say that most of our private policies have already understood the reoccurrence setting, but as we're talking about that initial definitive therapy selection, um, that's where we do a lot of our work with our private payer policies. But I'm happy to report that the CMS, so this is your Medicare patients, we have full coverage for both indications. So it seems to be a good indication for all payers associated. Well, that's a good start. And anytime CMS adopts something, I think the private payers typically follow. It, that's what we tend to see is the trend. And we expect right. it with this one as well. Thank you so much, Beth. Thank you, Dr. Lin. It's great to see you again. All right. So th for those of you who are interested at the cutting edge, the latest and greatest, check out Pilarify. Have a great rest of the weekend. Bye-bye.